are live. Yes. <laughs> welcome. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Real Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's a special day. Today is Tuesday, April 4, and today is one of my episodes of Real Talk with Lisa. And today I have a special guest, Jim Lutz. Hi, Jim. Welcome. Hey, Lisa. How are you today? I'm sorry for the lighting. I'm way up high in the sky with nothing but windows, and uh, but you look absolutely stunning, as always. Thank you. So uh, I know that in life, there are so many things that happen in our conscious mind and our subconscious mind and the glitches that happen and what we attract in life. And believe it or not, I think you and I have attracted each other from a few years ago and how we connected. This is amazing to be here live with you. And I want to say special thank you for saying yes to be my guest today. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Yes, we uh, Lisa's going to share a pretty interesting story here in a little while. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's talk about this. It's uh, we connected a few years ago online because of the work you do and the work that I do being a hypnotherapist in this beautiful world of consciousness. And and we said, let's get together. Let's get together. And it took us about two years after COVID. And then I told you I'm coming down to uh, San Diego area for a special event. And uh and I said, let's get connect there. And you said, sure. So we did have lunch. And during lunch, we were having a discussion. Go ahead, Jim. You turned around and you showed me a picture. And then we were like both stunned. Do you have that picture on you? Uh, let me just your phone, you right? and see if I can find it. Okay. Um, Until the yeah, time that you find. 100%. The most amazing part is the work that I do, it's all about mind, body, and emotions. So as a clinical hypnotherapist, the work we do is tap into the subconscious mind of ours. And as we were discussing, we started talking about our background, where we went to school. And I told him, I studied with Master Gil Boyne. And he said, so did I. No kidding. And the next thing we know is like, <laughs> go ahead and show it to everybody. Show it now? All right. It's my younger brother on the left over there. So there you go. That's Jim Lutz right there with Gil Boyne. And uh, he was the founder of Hypnotism Institute, Training Institute in Glendale and so many other things, and especially rapid induction in our field. There is the progressive and there is the rapid. So when Jim showed me that picture and I said, wait a minute, I know the background. It's this. <laughs> That's the exact background. So when Gilboin passed away years ago, um, I was humbly, a uh, in that office and the office manager allowed me to purchase this as a reminder. So Jim, let's talk about hypnosis. But before we do, please take a moment, introduce yourself with your title and everything and that you are doing right now is self-hypnosis mastery. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, well, first of all, that picture was a long time ago. I mean, so I Wow, you know, sometimes I look at myself in the picture, I go, wow, really? Is that what I look like? You know, I think I had a mullet and a mustache. When well, did you graduate, by the way? In 92. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, then as you know, oh, now what? You know, so, uh, you, you know, you went, I did the traditional hypnotherapy, smoking, weight loss, confidence, you know, the rest of the stuff. And, uh, but, you know, I come out of a, 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 I used to have my own rock band. And so I kind of miss being on stage. So I kind of pivoted our skill sets more into the seminars and masterminds and, you know, events, more of the, the speaking realm. So uh, I'm the CEO of Lutz International. I have four companies under that umbrella. Um, they're all connected with 
the human mind, whether that be psychoneuroimmunology, psychosomatic parenthetics, or hypnosis or neurolinguistics. And so that's what I do. Um, I like our industry, especially because it helps people, number one. Number two, it helps people that um, are looking for solutions in some cases for years uh, because they're going down the conventional route. And it also is fun because you can, it's a chameleon-like industry. You can, you can maneuver what you do into different things so that, you know, you don't get bored and it still is, uh, is very helpful to people. So, yeah, so that's what I'm doing now and been doing it for uh, 30 years, for, uh, for 30 years. Okay. So when we talk about the power of uh, our mind, and uh, I love it. Mm, on your website, you also talk about the how the brain is controlling our psychological functions from digestion. Uh, when we talk about IBS, I work a lot with IBS and how we hold on to things or life is running out of us and how hypnosis in working with the immune system and literally the mind and the body connection, the connection of uh, who we are physically, mentally, emotionally, and the power of the subconscious, how the subconscious controls so much of our behavior because of the blueprint. I call it the blueprint, the patterns that we have. Uh, let's talk about that just a little bit. Sure, absolutely. Well, it spawned an entire industry uh, uh, coined under the name psychoneuroimmunology, which is mind-body. A long time ago, you know, not unlike hypnosis, it was over here in some unknown, non-academic category. But hypnosis is no longer on trial. You know, it's adopted by, you know, the dentistry industry, the medical industry. And it's like anything else. Um, if it's not understood, it's discarded until, you know, it's understood. So uh, a real simple example that I give uh, at my events is if you had an ulcer and you went to the doctor and you asked the conventional allopathic MD, what caused the ulcer, they're going to give you a psychoneuroimmunology answer. They're going to say stress. Mm -hmm. Well, stress is in the mind. So they're automatically making that connection that every thought creates an organic response in the body because if stress can create the ulcer through the mind, couldn't the mind also heal the ulcer or heal the other thing? It can't. It's not just a one directional thing. And so if the mind can cause an actual sore in the stomach, conversely, 180 degrees, could it not heal the body? Of course it can. Right. Uh, is that almost what we call it psychosomatic? Yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. Right. And I know that if we can create, well, sometimes, um, most times, clients who are in pain, that there is no medical diagnosis or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It is created by them for them. And we hold it in the body. And the same way as I healed within through hypnotherapy and changed the trajectory of my life going from legal into the work that we are doing. Um, it's the same as when I do self-hypnosis for having a uh, endodontist going to the endodontist and having a root canal with absolutely no anesthesia so it is the mind over the body mm -hmm. but how is it that when it comes to psychosomatic what what is the power of the subconscious why would anyone want to come to a hypnotherapist versus a conventional um, doctor or psychologist or anything like that? Well, well, you know, a conventional doctor would deal with the physiology. A psychologist would deal with the mind through the only modality that they're aware of, which is talk therapy. So they, they would use Virginia Satir, Carl Rogers, Gestalt. Uh, they would use, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, it, it's effective to a degree. I'm biased because I have friends that I've trained uh, that are psychologists and I've trained them in hypnosis. You know, I own the National Academy of Hypnosis. We train hypnotherapists in so they did that. And so I would ask one, uh, my friend's name was Mealy, and she's a psychologist, very good one. And I said, Mealy, what are you doing this week? She goes, oh, I'm working with Dennis. I go, well, how long have you been working with Dennis? Four years. Four years, <clears throat> you know, because they're not dealing with this. Four years. And so they're because they're not dealing with the, you know, the unconscious mind or the, the origin of where it is. So another great demonstration that I do 
is speed your heart rate up. If you're watching this, speed your heart rate up. Now, I know we always have a yogi, you know, on the, on the webinar, but speed your heart rate up right now. You can't do it. Kick your adrenal glands in. You can't do it. Sweat. You can't do it. Yet, if you were to wake up tonight and you dream in the subconscious mind that there was an intruder in your home and he or she was going to cause you harm, you'd wake up, pop, 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 sweating in your adrenal glands, cortisol would be going. Why? There's no threat now and there's no legitimate threat then. So how come you can't do it now? Because you're obviously in conscious brain, beta brainwave and you dream in the subconscious. So as you know, preaching to the choir, hypnosis removes the critical factor and allows uh, access into the subconscious that is incapable of differentiating between what is imagined and what is real. So people do that um, unintentionally because when you uh, when I do my events, I'll have uh, somebody take a microphone and I'll bring them up on stage and I'll say, OK, you got the microphone. Yeah, you good. OK. And what I want you to say is I want you to say, I have cancer. I have cancer. I have cancer. I want you to say that 15 times. And they go, no. Go, why won't you say it? Well, I'm not going to say it. I said, why not? Go, I might get cancer. Then why do you go home and say, I can't find love. I can't find love. I'm broke. I can't pay my bills. Either words have power or they don't. You can't selectively apply them. Right. So they're doing the same thing to themselves and creating that self-fulfilling prophecy, if you will, whether that be organic disease or whether that be financial blocks or whether that be being unlovable. And all of those, as you said, are stored in that blueprint or those imprints, you know, in the subconscious, unless you go in and pluck the, uh, the, uh, the weed out by the, the root, so to speak, then it's going to continue to thrive. Exactly. One of the things my 3E method is evoke, embrace, evolve. And when I say you are here for us to literally heal your pain and the pain can be emotional pain, physical pain, mental pain. It's the anguish and the pain either for anxiety, for whatever it is that you're suffering from. And it could be your weight. It could be an addiction, which sometimes I turn around and say, what are you uh, instead of addiction dedicated to? What is your dedication to? And if that is what it is, then you're holding on to that. So mm -hmm. we evoke, we go in to evoke what was, where is the cause? Where is the root? Where did it, it start? It? Like, I remember when I started smoking, it was because my cousin gave it to me as a reward for bringing him a pack of cigarettes. And it became a reward system. And as you know, and so many, we either go from excruciating pain that we have to remove ourselves from, or the reward is so great we can't wait to have it. Right? 100%. So that in mind, I want to go back to Jim. I have a question. What was your what is your breakthrough? What was your story to go from? I know, I mean, not every rock and roll person turns around and says, I want to be a hypnotherapist. What was your story that took you to study this? Well, I was sitting on the wall over here in Pacific Beach one day, and I was engaged in an activity that I liked, which was called watching the girls walk back and forth. And uh, really, really thought, well, Jeez, you know, that's what I'm doing. And so this guy sits down and he was an old guy, about 40, you know, at the time. And so he sits down and we're talking. He says, I'm an entrepreneur. And I, I didn't know if that was somebody that studied bugs. You know, I really didn't know. I didn't really know. The word wasn't throwing around back then like it is these days. So I yeah. said, well, what do you do? And he says, I dictate where my body goes 365, 24, 7. No man or woman tells me when to stop eating. I stop eating when I want to stop and my dad was a business guy. My brother was a doctor. And I said, well, they don't have that kind of freedom. So that was my first catalyst of being enamored with entrepreneurship. And I said, well, how do I do it? He goes, you build your mind first. And so, he, you know, here we go with, you know, thinking grow rich, the magic of believing by Claude Bristol, Maxwell Maltz, psycho cybernetics, you know, the science of getting rich by Wallace Maltz, 1918. So I just, I just complete, I love reading. I just dove into that. And then I went to a party in Del Mar when I was 27 or 28. I went to a party in Del Mar. There was a hypnotist there, you know, doing funny stuff. And so there was a hypnotist there making people forget their name and, you know, sticking their hand to the counter and, you know, crazy stuff. And, and he kept mentioning the subconscious, the subconscious. And I go, wow, look at that connection. And I said, that's it. 
That's what I'm doing the rest of my life. I don't care. All other career options are off the table. I'm going to be one of the best hypnotists in the world. I don't care now. Where do you learn this stuff? And he goes, people teach it. And I said, well, I, I figured that out. Uh, I go, but who's the best in the world? And if I've got to Australia, I'll go to Australia. Uh, and he goes, uh, Gil Boyd in Los Angeles. He hypnotized Sylvester Stallone prior to the Rocky movies. And I go, that's fine. So I jumped in my little car and I drove two hours to Glendale and met Gil and and uh, created a friendship with the guy. And, you know, he, as you know, he's very paternal and I have a tendency to be a little paternal, too. So, we you know, we, we hit it off and uh, then boom. And he said to me something that I'm sure he says to other people, but he goes, you know, Jim, you're a natural at hypnosis. And I said, thank you. And he goes, but you suck. <laughs> what do you mean? He goes, you haven't, you haven't done a thousand people yet. Introvert, extrovert, old, young, male, female, left brain, right brain. You know, I can teach you a golf swing in a weekend, but you're not going to go on the PGA tour till you go swing it thousands of times. So I took mm. I went out and I stuck people in a timeshare in Carlsbad, California. They put me up there every Monday night. I'm throwing up and hyperventilating in the parking lot because I'm scared out of my mind. And I would go in there and fail and then succeed and then fail and fail and then succeed and succeed and then fail until finally I got, as you know, the, you know, the, uh, the cadence, the rhythm, the mechanics and, you know, the delivery down and, and then off you go. And it's been since 1992, huh? Yeah. 90, 92, late 92. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, the amazing thing is Marisa Pierce uh, graduated um, and studied with Gil. Uh, your friend, Mark from SK, who invited you to come to the event, yeah. he was up on stage. And when I talked to him, I told him I studied with Gil. And he said, so did I. Yeah. And then you and I, it was like, it's the synchronicity of this it's uncanny uh he was a force of nature and he believed in the art and science of the subconscious mind so he, what i would like to know is what is the biggest misconception do you believe that people have of the work we do well, it's derived from the fact it's not taught in normal academia. And we're a culture that is academically groomed from freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, bachelor's degree, master, PhD. So anything outside of that paradigm sometimes goes into the woo-woo field or, or, you know, the unknown. They just don't know what they don't know. So therefore, they need some form of credibility that they adhere to in order for them to believe it. Because if the mind is not you know, aware of it, it just discards it. Uh, rather than, rather than figure it out, right? So what I always do is if you're able to present a metaphor or an analogy like I did with, you know, the uh, intruder in the house, you can make things more digestible because they're irrefutable. And so now they're more open to it. Con the other side of it is people, people's skepticism um, gets in their own way. And mm -hmm. skepticism is a good thing, but blatant you know, roadblock skepticism, you know, is horrible because you don't know what you don't know. Right. You know, the skeptics, you know, stood with the Wright brothers and said, you know, you're never going to fly. Man's not. So you always have those contingents of people. So my job is not to create converts. My job is to give a valid option with, with, the, with the attitude of giving and not by taking. But it's ultimately up to them, you know, if they want to explore, you know, an alternative to what, you know, to what they're normally Top. And, we, and we know that. I'm not anti allopathy I've had a health challenge, as we both know. Uh, I'm, of course, I went to a normal doctor, but I've always opened to adjunct therapies and alternative therapies, you know, as well. One of the biggest markets out there, markets, is not only psychoneuroimmunology, but the fact that people's potential for financial success exceeds their reality over and over and over. And that could be an imprint from money doesn't grow on trees, money is bad. You know, we have all of those, you know, dialogues occurring you know, as a child. And I think what that's, what that stems from is they're, they're the thermometer, not the thermostat. Uh, oh, I love that one. The, thermo the thermometer reacts to the external circumstances. It goes up and down and up and down. Good day, bad day. How was your day today? It's just a day, you know, in the construct of a lifetime. It's not this up and down roller coaster because if it's a bad day, 
then that's comparative analysis to some other day. So we get stuck in the compared. There's no overweight people unless there's thin people. There's no tall people unless there's short people. So everything is a comparative analysis. The idea with the subconscious is to set the thermostat, not the thermometer. Now, the thermostat, when it is set at this income, whatever that income is, then the external environment brings everything to that set point. It has to adhere to your desire. It, it has to adhere. You've got the five physical senses. You've got the reticular activating system for, well, for whatever somebody believes. You've got the quantum field, the universal consciousness. And you're engaging in a much more powerful alliance than just trying a little old human trying to get things done through, you know, great force of will. So what would you... Uh what would you do differently if you were to start in this interest industry today? What would you say to someone who wants to go into a like a six year uh, schooling and everything? Or actually, I taught my dentist how to do the hypnosis on mm -hmm. uh, their patients. Uh, if somebody wanted to go into this industry uh, or come and learn from your mastery, because I know you also teach uh, as well as I teach self-hypnosis um, for them to have an open mind for them to what, what would you say? Well, are you, are you, um, are you talking about doing it as a career or doing it just for a, a reason? Well, um, I mean, they come to us for a reason because of anxiety, because of oh, weight, right. smoking, uh, all that. But if they wanted to do a career, huh? I believe this is an amazing career. Yeah. It, it is. And uh, I'm the founder of the National Academy. Here comes my plug, right? I'm the, yes, founder, that's of right. The, yeah. I'm the founder of the National Academy of Hypnosis. And so um, I would venture to say that if anybody has more experience in hypnosis than myself and Lisa, we would know who they are. Uh, you know, we've been around for a long time. And in the world of Insta experts, you know, I can talk and, and Lisa can talk to somebody for 10 minutes and know really their depth of hypnotic knowledge because there's you know, they trained, you know, um, uh, you know, for an hour and a half or something. So, you know, they, they, oh, just, and they don't really have the depth of knowledge when, you know, when we trained, there was no option other than going to the actual place and training with the master or somebody that was, you know, very, very talented. So the Wall Street Journal calls uh, certified hypnotherapists one of the fastest growing professions in the country. And so you can complete the training in as little as eight weeks. And then I do something. I can do it virtually or in person in San Diego. Then I teach two weeks of marketing. And to me, somebody that embarks upon a career, they're excited. It could be a chiropractor. It could be a yoga instructor. They fall right off the cliff when it comes to marketing because they didn't learn that. So they just sit there in their chiropractic clinic. Well, where's all the people with this bad back? Because they're not going to walk in because core competency in the, in the skill sets does not translate into core competency into marketing. So at the National Academy of Hypnosis, we teach certified hypnotherapists and then we teach them how to market. So for people that are looking for a different career, you know, in, you know, eight to 10 weeks, here's what I tell the people. Look, do you know anybody with anxiety? Well, there's your clientele. Do you know anybody that wants to lose weight? Well, there's your clientele. Do you know anybody that wants more confidence? Well, there's your clientele. Do you know anybody that has a skin condition? Well, there's your clientele. Do you know anybody that has pain? Well, there's your clientele. So the cool thing about what you do and what we do is the, the uh, clients are so plentiful that they'll never, ever run out. And, you know, depending on where we live, we live in the higher end, um, you know, of the United States. Uh, it's $150 to $250 per hour average, um, which, is, which is great, you know. And then if you do packages, et cetera. So I would say that you get in front of a trend. It's not on trial anymore. Uh, hypnosis now is fascinating versus discarded. So I know when I speak, I'm speaking tonight down here, they're fascinated by hypnosis because they've heard of it already or they've seen it somewhere. Maybe it doesn't matter, stage show like Mark, that they've seen it. So that skepticism is diluted a lot more. And now it becomes a legitimate profession, you know, versus, you know, the voodoo or, you know, something over here. So, <laughs> Well, I mean, nowadays even... Um... Bruce Limpton, that comes from science, has accepted hypnosis, talks about hypnotherapy and everything. Even Dr. Joe Dispenza, coming from science, is now doing a lot of things with neuroscience or psychosomatic. Uh, and um, 
psychoimmune system and NLP, which is neuro-linguistic programming, those are all become mainstream. And yeah. even Tony Robbins, that literally a lot of people think it's um, he's the master in putting the events together. He used the hypnosis. So the power of hypnosis is not to, a lot of people think that you're going to make me change my mind, but that is not what a good therapist would, would do. Uh, a kosher ethical person is not there to do stage hypnosis and make you quack like a duck or uh, bark like a dog. And so if you had a megaphone right now, I'm talking to Jim, what would you want the whole world to know about you? I would say that it is a, I'm going to use this word lightly, uh, but it's a travesty if you don't engage in the free enterprise system during your life because it, in, in whatever you do, uh, it is uh, a lot of work, but this is the one country you should do it. At least do it, at least give it a go. You know, I mean, just go for it because you don't know your potential because it's capped by what some other man or woman determines your worth. And it's not about getting rich. Maybe you do want to get rich, but it's about freedom that you can go and come as you want. And so if I want to take an hour and a half for lunch, I'll take two hours and sit with you for lunch versus a buzzer going off and telling me that I have to finish my chicken sandwich or they're going to take away my my financial security. And so one is I would, you know, embrace the entrepreneurial world. Number two is I would look for something that is you make your money by giving. And mm. I would look at some profession that you do things for people and not to them. So when I do get the people that are kind of hovering in the skepticism sphere, I just say, you just don't know what you don't know. And I go, are you a sports fan? And they'll say, yeah. I go, why don't you Google Mike Tyson hypnosis? Because he attributes hypnosis since he was 17 to one of the contributing factors why he became a world champion. Did you know Princess Diana used hypnosis? Did yeah. you know Jimmy Connors and Sean Connery? Do you know that Matt Damon has a private hypnotherapist that travels with him? And they just go, what? Because they just what? didn't know what they don't know. I've worked with top UFC fighters, professional poker players, celebrities. They always want to make sure that they use this to help this. And they're smart enough to do that. And that's why they have the edge over the competition because they learn to use their mind as an ally, you know, versus an adversary. So this is my life work. Um, I probably only have 70 to 80 years left, you know, so unless we get some busy with some psycho neuroimmunology on a real high level. Uh, but no, it's a, it's a great rewarding profession. And and uh, you meet people like, you know, like you, obviously. And it's and it was there's a woman that told me this word. You, you might have heard of it. I never heard of it before. Uh, but she said, you know, you know why we met? And I said, why? And she goes, synchro destiny. I go, wow, I never heard that word. But I go, that, that's pretty, that was a pretty cool word. That's beautiful. Um, I know if we can do hypnobirthing through hypnosis, and have an easy birthing and that I have helped approximately 14 uh, young moms. Uh, as a matter of fact, even few of them who could not even get pregnant for them to release the block from the body, mm -hmm. for the body to accept, you know, mm -hmm. getting pregnant and everything. So it, this is the work we do is not only healing, but we make a transformative big change in the lives of others. And that is the most fulfilling thing that there is when you, when someone walks in with panic and anxiety an hour later, they are walking out with a smile. So thank you for not only being the person that teaches, but also the one who does the work. Um, so finish this sentence, Jim. Okay. My name is Jim. Oh, you want me? Is that, is that the quote? Okay. My name is Jim Lutz. And I am. Jim Lutz is what? 
is a man that has the capability of taking a person from where they're at, incinerating any barriers that are impeding where they want to go and getting them to the destination quickly as possible. Mic drop. <laughs> and have fun doing it uh, as well. Well, I want to say thank you very much for being my guest today, even with the glitches and your, your friendship. I know when we were walking away after lunch, we were in the street and I saw that chair and I hopped on there and you said, let me take a picture. And I was so giddy because... <laughs> You know, not only the walk of going back to another time and a place and finding a kinship with you, but a friendship. And for that, I want to thank you for who you are, what you offer to this country, to this world, to the people who come to your events and want to not only transform, but make their million dollars because you can help them with their mindset and reset. Thank, oh, you. thank you. Just you reach out to me on social media if you're interested in hypnotherapy certification or working. And, you know, um, it's just been, you know, it almost brings tears to my eyes to where you meet somebody that you have something in common with that many years ago and you, you studied under the same teacher that many years ago and then you've got the tapestry right there behind you i so, did it only for you this is not my norm background pretty crazy i mean i'm gonna i'll, I'll cap it off with this one we'll, we'll let it go but you guys had to be there you really did. we're sitting in this italian restaurant and i show her a picture of me and gil and she goes wow that is you with gil boy that was a long time ago and then look at that tapestry between you and she goes i own that and so it's just it is just a wild story but an honor to meet you and we're not you know we're not continents away so i'll see you in in person real soon definitely we're going to be doing things together more often thank you so much jim you. God bless. and for all of you viewers thank you so much for being here being present and we look forward to seeing you again next week bye-bye bye Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.